Hi there. After this lesson, you should be able to determine whether a relation is a function from a table or a graph. In order to achieve this, we must first understand the meaning of the term function. Take a look at this equation. It represents the amount of money I would make from selling balloons for $2 each, where x represents the number of balloons sold and y represents my profit. For example, if I sold two balloons, I could input two into my equation where x is to determine that I would make $4. How much would I make selling nine balloons? Well, I just input nine into my equation to determine that I will make a profit of $18. If I sold 125 balloons, I can input that into my equation to see that I would make a profit of $250. I could continue this for any number of balloons. Notice these x values, or the values in my domain. They are the values that I inputted into my equation. For that reason, we oftentimes refer to them as input values. The y values, or values in the range, are oftentimes called output values, since this is the number that comes out of the equation. It is important to understand the different names of these various terms moving forward. Okay, you might recall that this table can be thought of as a relation, or a set of ordered pairs. Well, this is where the term function comes into play. You see, a function is just a relation in which every input has exactly one output. What this means is that every input value, or member of the domain, will only pair with one output value, or member in the range. If it has more than one pair, then it is not considered a function. To test this, we draw a mapping diagram where the first oval will contain the inputs and the second will contain the outputs. It will also help to put the values in order. So let's see. We have 2, 9, and 125 in the domain and 4, 18, and 250 in the range. If I look back at my table, I see that 2 is paired with 4, 9 is paired with 18, and 125 with 250. We see that only one arrow is coming from each member of the domain. Since each input value is paired with only one output value, this relation is a function. Okay, your turn. Fill in the mapping diagram to determine whether the following relation is a function. All right, first, we make a list of all inputs and outputs in order. Our inputs are two, three, four, and five. You can see that the two appears twice, but we will only write it once because we are simply writing a list of input values. Okay, and the outputs in order are 0, 1, 3, 6, and 9. Great. Now, let's draw an arrow from each input to the output it is paired with. 2 pairs with 6, 5 pairs with 1, 4 with 0, 2 pairs with 3, and 3 pairs with 9. If you hadn't already noticed, we see that there are two arrows coming from the number 2. This input value matches with more than one output value, and so therefore it is not a function. Let's try another one. Go ahead and determine whether the following relation is a function. Okay, we will write our input values and our output values in order without repeating. Next, we will draw arrows to show the pairs. 6 pairs with 1, negative 1 pairs with 8, 0 with 6, 7 with 4, and 2 pairs with 8. Since there is only one arrow stemming from each input value, this relation is a function. Now you may say, whoa, 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 wait. 
I see two arrows pointing to this one y value. However, this is just fine. The definition of a function clearly states that x values can only have one y value, so we are not at all concerned that this y value is paired with more than one x value. The last thing we will cover is how to determine whether a graph is a function. We could certainly create a table of values, and then a mapping diagram, and then draw arrows to help us out. However, and you're going to love this, there is an easier way. For graphs, we use what is called the vertical line test. It is the easy method we use to quickly determine whether each input is paired with only one output. To use it, we draw a vertical line through each point on the graph. If any of the vertical lines pass through more than one point, then the relation is not a function. This means that they have an x value in common, which contradicts the definition of a function. So, since this line right here passes through more than one point, we can conclude that this is not a function. Take a look at this graph. You may want to note that on a graph such as this, the line that makes up the graph is comprised of an infinite number of points. So, we will draw several lines just to make sure that there are no lines that pass through the graph twice. Looking carefully, we can see that each line passes through only once on the graph. Therefore, this relation is a function. Okay, your turn. Use the vertical line test to determine whether each relation is a function. Okay, let's take a look. Since none of these vertical lines pass through more than one point, the first relation is a function. Take a look at the second graph. We only have to draw one vertical line through the second graph to see that it passes through at more than one point. This relation is not a function. Lastly, we will draw several vertical lines th through the third graph. There is no instance in which the line passes through more than one point on the graph. Therefore, it is a function. Good job! Mm -hmm.